Okay, so I thought I'd do a video on some infrared photography that I did many years ago. And um, one of the films that I used was a Kodak Ektachrome infrared film. And I've just done a little look on, on the old tippy tappy, as they say, to find out a bit more about the film. It was rated at 100 ISO, but there were other versions of it. Originally, the slide version was processed as E4. Um, and I'd, I'd never used that, but I've used the E6 version, which come out later. And now you're gonna see a few photographs. And I've got my tablet with me here with the, all the pictures on that I'm gonna talk about and uh, just go through them with you and explain about them. So we're gonna start with the, the church and I've only got four good photographs of this E6 infrared, the, the, the Kodak infrared. And the reason being is you had to bracket your exposure. And I just didn't have a clue where I was because the fact is the tolerance of an E6 a, a slide film is that much more particular. I took about five shots of each thing. So the first one we got up is of some tombstones. And it looks like someone sprayed some red mush over the tombstones and that was just moss. And that's how it come up. So the two cameras I had at the time were Canon EOS 1000FN and I also had a Canon AE-1. Now, from what I understand, and this is why I didn't put it in the 1000FN, is the transport system for the film is counted is used somehow by counting the sprockets within infrared light, so basically it fogged the film. So I put the film in my AE-1 and I know it was a 50mm lens because I only had a 50mm lens for the AE-1 and that's how I know which camera I took them on. So this one is of the actual church itself. This is a place in Clophill, called Clophill, just south of Bedford where I live. And I knew with the, the, the light we had on the day, it was going to be quite spectacular. So I took the one at the front of the church. I, obviously you've seen the one of the, of the tombstones. And then there's another single tombstone itself. And it just looks like this red fire around this one old top of a, top of a tombstone with a cross on it. Um, Looking back at it now, they're really, really bizarre and really peculiar. But as I say, I only got four shots because the problem I had was I had to bracket some exposures. And then the next shot you see is of the church in full. Now I'll try and find another shot I took recently of the church. It has changed slightly and it's been renovated a bit and there's things there that, that weren't there before, but there's a pathway, proper pathway and stuff built in. Um, but, but I'm like, this stuff is crazy. And um, I was just really privileged to be able to use this film back in the day. So now we're going to go on to a few of the other films that I used. And the, the next one is the actual Kodak high-speed infrared film. And that was rated at 400 ISO. And uh, the first picture you'll see is a place called Houghton House. Another derelict uh, building just outside the uh, town of Amptel, which is not far from um, Clophill. And... You have no idea what you're going to get. Now, you're meant to use an infrared filter, but they always said, you, oh, you can use a red filter. And I couldn't afford the infrared filter, so I used to use a red filter instead. But it, you still get the effect. It's not as probably not as dramatic as with a proper, I think it's an R, is it an R72 or something lens, uh, which I have now anyway, which I do my, my, my infrared photography, and you'll see a few shots at the end. Um, the next one is the of, of a of a tree that's been that's had its leaves come off. I don't know if it's been struck by lightning or what it is. And it was we nicknamed it the gate because there was actually a gate next to it where we actually took the shot. And this one is just I was so pleased when I saw it and I saw the negative after I developed it. Another thing is I can't remember what developing chemicals I'd have used because I'd have had, back in the day you couldn't just go online and look them up. You would have had to um, either work it out or ask people that you knew that were photographers had they done it themselves before. My main developer back in the 1990s was Ilfosol S. So the likelihood is I would have de developed in that and managed to get a rough idea of the development temperature. And then there's the cows. I don't know why I took pictures of cows in infrared. And again, they were in the same field that where we were just taking what we called the gate. Um, and then we move over to Amptill Park, which is on the other side of the road. And there's this, tr there's this tree and this stump of this tree. And I just thought, oh, this looks amazing. So I, so I took a shot of that. And then this last one of the high-speed infrared black and white, 
it's nicknamed the angel. A Christian friend of mine saw it and said, it's like an angel, you know, it's, it's just, just incredible. I actually don't particularly like this one too much. I think it's a bit, a bit flat, um, but, but people love this one. Now we're looking at some Konica infrared film. It's 750 nm's, which I believe is in nanometers. Correct me if I'm wrong. And it was rated at something like 50 ISO. I need to check on, check on that. And um, this particular shot isn't that great. I used it two different times. The first time was on 35 mil and the second time was on medium format. So the first few shots you'll see were taken on 35 mil. Now, I think looking at this shot, rather than it being out of focus, which it may look, I think it's more camera shake because the ISO was so low. Um, and again, I turned around and looked the other way back down the river and you get these beautiful white leaves and stuff. And it, and it, it just looks really, really nice with the ducks on, on the river. And then there's a, a place that's now, uh, now an Indian restaurant and it was called Nichols at the time. And it had this nice black fencing around it and that's really really gone dark and the tree behind the actual building is as um as bleached out white but the, the ones i'm more pleased with was when i shot on medium format with the conica and you can see the river embankment with the boats and i just i'm just like love this photograph i mean i don't like saying about loving my own photographs but i do really love this shot and um I remember developing thinking, wow. Again, remembering that I was bracketed exposure. So I literally took three shots of this. So what I'll do is when I take them, I do one at exposure, what it says through the light meter. I take one, one stop down, and then I'll take one, one stop up. Because you don't know how much infrared light there's gonna be. Um, it was normally the stop down that was the one, the one that actually worked. Um, so, yeah, and I'm thinking about it. It was shot on medium format, so I must have done something with my handheld meter. because so I remember the actual Veronica didn't have a light meter on it. So I don't know how I worked out the exposure. And then again, there's another shot of the, of the river looking down towards what they call the suspension bridge with the most amazing cloud formation. And the last one of that lot, the um, actual uh, conic infrared, was of the beach, what they call the beach pool. I've done other shots on my other videos about that. And I just took, why I took the camera to, the, to a funny angle, I don't know, but it's still against a really dramatic shot. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to the stuff I've done recently, and this is the um, Roly Retro 400S, remembered it. And that can be shot as an ordinary black and white film, and you can throw an infrared filter on, it, it, it does the infrared spectrum. Now, when you put an infrared filter on a camera, you can't see diddly. There's, you can't see anything at all. It is literally just, just completely fogged out. So what I did with it when I took these shots was, I, howled, I had it on the, tri the camera on the tripod. I then held the filter in front of the lens. Um, it worked, um, but it's, as I say, it's really, really difficult to focus. And what you do with that was, I think that the, the, it was 400 speed, so I rated it at 400. And then I opened up by five stops, and that was the recommendation for this. Did that, I only had five frames, because I used it as an ordinary black and white film, and I used five frames for the, for the thing, and they all come out fine with no problems at all. So the five stop rule for, for the actual Rode Retro is, is pretty accurate. Okay, last but not least, Ilford SFX, which is not, I don't think it's a true infrared film, um, and you can see that on a couple of these shots. I'll just flick through the shots now, but you'll see. And there's one I took, and I still, to the life of me, don't remember how I took this. Because it's got a soft filter. It's got something softness in it, and I don't know how that is. I never remember owning a soft filter for my camera at the time. So I don't know, um, but it definitely was shot on the SFX, because it's actually on the negative, so as an SFX shot. And it's just the, the, the trees with the, the, the leaves hanging down and, and stuff. And it's like, but I don't remember ever having a soft filter. So this is the last shot I took on SFX. And it's just two ladies, two old ladies walking down a path, walking under this gorgeous blossom. It's not true infrared, but I was so pleased with it. It's just so lovely. Um, and... I literally stood and waited for them. I was like, they're gonna, they're gonna, it's gonna make a great shot, especially if no one's in the background. And um, anyway, so, so yeah, really pleased. If 
you're interested in infrared photography, infrared and want some advice of what I've done, please comment below or message me, whatever. Um, you know, some of you have been doing it for years, probably years longer than I have. But I hope you enjoyed me just sharing these few photographs with you. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Thanks.